We all make mistakes. In this video, I make two. One ruined a great shot, and the other, well, that made a ruined shot great. It really is a funny old business, this landscape photography game, so sit back and enjoy today's video. Well, good morning, everybody. You join me as I'm setting up for the, uh, the first shot of the morning. It's beautiful. This is exactly the reason why I came out last night, slept in my van so that I could be on location first thing in the morning because these conditions that we have, they don't last. So whenever I get up and go out with my camera, I try to keep an open mind, but the truth is, I always have these creeping expectations of what I'm going to shoot. And I knew that this morning was gonna be about intimate small landscapes because we're not gonna get any real dramatic light. But whilst we don't have light, what we do have is mood and atmosphere. I don't know if you can see just behind me here, we have banks of fog and mist rolling through the distant landscape and it's coming, it's ebbing and flowing and the, the scene is ever changing and that is perfect for opportunistic, I don't know, image, <laughs> I was gonna say image grabbing, image stealing, but my point is, you know, on conditions like we have this morning, quite often where there isn't a shot, usually a shot can suddenly manifest itself. That's what I'm getting at and it's great. And this is my first image of the morning and it's, uh, it's nothing special, but it does have something about it. It's a lovely, peaceful, quiet scene. Um, I'll not go on too much about it because I want to crack on and, and get going. Um, but I think we'll call this one the house in the hills. There we go. How creative is that? The house in the hills. So most of the atmosphere from this morning's gone now, and that happens after sunrise, as the sun comes up, it begins to burn off the mist and fog. But that's okay, because I've come to this beautiful quarry, and there's, there's so much potential here. Uh, so many intimate scenes, and we're just, just beginning to see colors start to turn now. There's some larches down in the quarry that are just going at a lighter shade of green as they transition to yellow. Just over here behind me, I don't know if you can see it, but on the rock face there on the crag is this overhanging, almost upside down tree. And that really caught my attention. So that is what I'm gonna to attempt for my next subject. Yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a bit of an awkward one, this. I have to obviously be very careful as <laughs> I am on the edge and uh, fall here. There's no one, there's no one for miles. No one would hear me scream. Um, but I need to be over this way, sort of overhanging the quarry so that I can get the angle on this tree. Um, and everything's a bit tight, so I'm not sure if this is going to work. But uh, it's the process that's the fun bit of photography. So I knew looking at it that this would be a tricky... Whoa, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm a couple of meters back from the edge, right? So it's like totally safe. But when you when you step in a pothole and <laughs> stumble back, you do, you get a bit of a fright when you're uh, surrounded by a 200 foot drop. Yeah, so I, I knew this composition was going to be a tough one because it's incredibly tight. Beyond my subject, the direction that I'm shooting is really bright sky. And I don't want any of that sky creeping into my shot. So I'm trying to balance this fallen upside down tree with the trees that are much lower down in the quarry, using the quarry wall to help balance the whole composition whilst 
not making this upside down tree too small in the frame, but if it's too big in the frame, then you don't get any context of its environment and the surroundings. So this is, uh, this for me, right now is one of the most enjoyable bits of photography. You've, you've put in the hard work, you've done the miles, you've found a subject, and you've got to work that subject. And uh, I really enjoy that. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this so far. So this is my first mistake. I missed focus on the tree. I'm not sure how this happened, but unfortunately the entire image is soft. And can you believe I only took one single frame? So this just goes to show you should always double check your pictures out on location. But I don't feel too bad. This scene is going nowhere. So I'm gonna come back when the colors change and reshoot this image, this time, nailing my focus. I've attached the 24 to 70 f4 Nikon lens. Um, I've not used this before, I'm hoping that it's the Goldilocks of the three lenses, which is the 24 to 120, the 24 to 70 f2.8 and of course the f4. It sits there right in the middle in terms of weight, size, price, and focal range. But I've got quite a nice shot here. I've been looking down at these larches into the quarry on the bottom of the quarry, trying to figure out if I can shoot them, how best to shoot them, because they're just, they're slightly backlit by the diffused sky um, over to the east. And they just really seem to pop and contrast with the deep blue slate rock that's behind the tree. So it's sort of green and blue contrast, and I like that. So the biggest decision I had to make was the foreground, or the not the foreground really, but the bottom of the image because we have a lot of boulders and they're quite bright, and slightly distracting. So the question I had was, do I include the boulders at the bottom of the frame, which might act as a bit of an anchor, a bit of a base, or do I exclude them? We'll, uh, we'll grab this shot and then we'll move on and see if we can find something else. I have to say, I am, I am just loving, you know, slow photography. There's a lot to be said the slow photography, just taking your time and, and really just picking out those tiny little compositions in what is an infinite, vast landscape. It's, it really is um, therapeutic, I think. I think is the word I would use. Anyway, I'll, I'll shut up now and, uh, and grab this shot. So the image that you just saw before, that was my last image of the morning. As you can tell, the, uh, the sun came out. So shortly after that image, uh, yeah, the clouds parted, bright sunlight came out. And by that time, the shoot's more or less over. The light's too harsh to work in. So I'm gonna have a bit of an explore, see if we can find another location for evening, late afternoon, sunset tonight, because the weather's looking fantastic. Cloudy, bit of sunshine but most notably, very little wind. And that, that is always, that's always a favorite of mine. When there's no wind, there is potential for lots of greatness. <laughs> I don't know. So I'll have a bit of a drive and see where we end up. Well, good afternoon slash evening, everybody. Um, look at this, <laughs> this is fantastic. We're at a lake called Lowe's Water. And could we have wished for anything better? Beautifully still, calm waters, reflections, lily pads, nice composition. But yeah, we are missing any kind of light or atmosphere. It is as flat as a pancake, but I personally, and holding out hope, hope of something special. And I'll tell you for why. So looking at my phone and going through various apps, you can see here, this is Lowe's Water. This 
is where we're standing. And if I go across to photo pills, you can see the direction in which the sun is setting. Now, if I move over to the next app, which is a satellite view of what the clouds are predicted to do, you'll see why I'm here and why I'm quite optimistic. Oh no, <laughs> got no service and the app's not loaded. Right, I might have to, in the video, I might have to freeze frame uh, the preview of the app. Of course, I've got no phone service now, so things might have changed, but what that preview uh, showed me before, a couple of hours ago, was that it looks as if the clouds to the west are clearing, and by 7 p.m., which is about 20 minutes before sunset, there sh it should be clear. I mean, it should be, right? It's, it's never that easy. So, oh, gee, view. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to be cool. I don't know what it is. Oh, gee, viewers, right? So, long-time viewers of the channel will know that I love a simple, minimalist image. And whilst we wait for the light and hope, which with every minute that goes past, my hope is getting lower and lower, but it doesn't matter because we have a beautiful shot. I started trying to frame these lily pads behind me and initially started out relatively wide at about 50 mil, but there was too many lilies. I, could, I was struggling to find and isolate the lilies and get a good balance, right? And then I thought, oh, I'll go a bit longer, a bit tighter and a bit tighter. And before I knew it, I put the 100 to 400 on. And then before I knew it, we're sitting at like 300 mil. <laughs> and I've gone from a frame with a thousand lilies and I've isolated it and isolated it and honed it down to four lilies. And that is going to be my first shot from this location. And I tell you, I quite, I quite like it. I think I like it. I don't think it's meant to be. Look, look at this, the wind out of nowhere, the wind just picked up. Now, all my shots have gone. I have no shots. <laughs> I should really say that because I always tell people there's a shot everywhere, no matter what. Luckily I got that shot of the lily pads. Um, so, you know, there's a jogger coming. <laughs> Sorry, a jog there's a footpath behind the camera and a jogger was just running past. I can't, sp I just can't do it. I, he doesn't care about me. I know that, but I just can't talk to her. I see someone, a blue, blue jogging t-shirt in the corner of my eye and I'm up, I'm gone. Yeah, could be an early finish. Could be an early finish. We'll see. Now, I don't often like to put myself on a pedestal, but I am a true master of my craft as I've created a fine art piece when faced with adversity of wind on the beautifully still lake. And I think you could learn a thing or two. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh man. Um, yeah, I hope no one's just tuned in at that point. <laughs> when I'm out shooting images, um, I'm always thinking about presentations. Bear with me, bear with me. When, uh, when I do presentations, I always regret not having a before and after image or a with and without image, you know, an image with light, an image without light. So you can show the difference between the two scenarios. And um, I thought to myself when the wind picked up and the water was all ripply, I thought to myself, better get a before and after. And I took the shot with the intention of it being terrible. And it just so happened that the shutter speed, which I believe was half a second, was just perfect to show the movement of the lily pads in such a way that the image represented a painting or a sketching, like an impressionist painting. Um, and I thought, bloody heck, that looks good. Complete fluke. And I thought, I know, I'll do a, a piece to camera about you know how good I am, <laughs> how, I can, how I can make an image even when conditions are against me. But of course, it's all lies and it was a complete fluke, but it does go to show that in any conditions, there is always room for creativity. Indeed, there is always room for creativity. And whilst this image was a mistake, my second mistake, because it was supposed to be shot at a faster shutter speed to freeze the water, I've been reminded of a valuable lesson, that there is always a shot to be had. You just need to recognize the potential.
So whilst I sit here and hope and pray for the light, which to be honest, if it doesn't happen <laughs> by the time I've finished this piece to camera, it's not happening at all. Uh, but I thought this would just be a good opportunity for me to thank the sponsor of this video, which is NordVPN. Now, up until a few months ago, before I started working with them, I didn't think a VPN was for me. I didn't think I needed that service, but since then I've been educated. So I am more than happy to promote NordVPN on this channel. So the classic example of a VPN, virtual private network, is that you can tell your computer, your laptop or whatever, that you're in a different country. So if you're on holiday in Spain, you can tell your laptop you're in the UK by connecting to a UK server, and then you can watch Coronation Street, right? Classic example, but so much more to it than that. With NordVPN, they offer lots of online security. So, for example, um, have you heard of a man in the middle attack? So basically, if you're in a cafe on public Wi-Fi and you log onto the cafe's Wi-Fi, well, there is a chance that that could be an imposter. You connect to them, and then as you input your daily browsing credentials, you know, your passwords and emails and all that sort of stuff, well, they're gathering all that information. But with NordVPN, they actually encrypt your data. So they encrypt your traffic. Um, another one, phishing scams. You get an email from the bank, but it's not your bank. It's a dodgy scammer with a fake email. You click on the link, you log in, bosh, they've got your details. Well, with NordVPN, if you go for the threat protection feature, then they scan all of the links and any attachments on your emails and that kind of thing for viruses, malware. So effectively, it's you can't <laughs> you click on a dodgy link or download a dodgy file. So if you're interested in a VPN, go to nordvpn.com forward slash Heaton and you can get an additional four months and there's also a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it and it's not for you, well, you can get your money back. So there you go, go to nordvpn.com forward slash Heaton and give it a go. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I'll spin you around and you can see the, uh, the sky there. Oh, yeah, just gray, 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 gray. There was, there was a bit of hope about five minutes ago, but there must be too much cloud around and sadly, the uh, weather report I looked at was inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs>